Now we're getting into our, we've gone over the bones. Now we're going to cover all those bones with muscle, right? We might be familiar with many of all these muscle names, right? All those common names like pecs, right? Your deltoids over here, your delts, your biceps, break eye right here, your abs over here, your traps, your trapezius, your, um, these are, uh, your lats and your traps over here, your glutes over here, your quads, your hamstrings over here, right? So you got all these great images online. You can just Google all these images and see them in real life, right? And at some point, you'll be able to recognize the soleus, I mean, the gastronemus, the soleus, your triceps. And let's see, these would be your flexor carpi radialis over here. And there would be your flexor carpi ulnaris, right? So you're going to be able to kind of recognize all these by the time you're done with it, right? So I could put a picture like this, any one random picture I get off the internet, and you should be able to recognize it. More scientifically here, right? We're going to look at the kind of nature of muscle and understand why it's connected the way it is and what it does, right? And then eventually we're gonna look deep inside this muscle and see how it's doing this action, right? But your basic action of any kind of muscle, right? We're talking about skeletal muscle for this one, but any kind of muscle tissue, the third tissue we're talking about is contraction. That is the ability to shorten and then whatever it's attached to, it's gonna pull those two things closer together right? Or maybe create a squeezing force depending on how it's arranged right there. But that's the nature of muscle tissue, right? It's contracting, it's shortening. It's the only tissue that does that. That's the unique characteristics, the defining characteristics of muscle tissue is to contract. Here, you know, you got the classic high school frog experiment. You take a frog leg, you attach it to a base and a weight, then you have a little stimulation right here. When you stimulate it, it contracts, and then it's going to move that weight up, right? So this is what muscle does right here. And so in this case, it's moving the weight closer to the base right there. So here's some examples. And here's your rhomboids. On this a picture like this, you got the superficial muscles over here. You got the deeper muscles over here. And they're all attached to bones in different ways. So these are your rhomboids right here. They're attached over here somewhere on your spine and then on the medial border of your scapula right there. When they contract, right, what's gonna happen based on your, the movement of your scapula, right? It's gonna bring the scapula closer to your spine right there. Or on your traps right here, they're attached from up closer up toward your head and coming down here on the scapula spine right there. When they contract, they're gonna kinda pull your scapula closer over to your spine and up toward here, right? So the muscles are contracting, they're pulling two things closer together. Uh, here's another example. This one isn't connected to two bones, right? But it's got, this is your rosorius muscle, one of all these facial muscles right here. It's attached somewhere back in your mandibular. Instead of attaching to bone, it's uh, attaching into the fascia of your skin around the corners of your lip right here. So when this contracts, right, it's gonna pull these lip muscles back toward the mandible back here, right? So you get a face like this, right? That kind of face when you're walking down the hall and you see a colleague for the fourth time, you're not sure if you should say hi or not. So that's that rosorius muscle. Right? All your facial muscles are kind of like that. They're attached on one place, a solid base, and they're gonna be attached all around your mouth, right? And when they contract, they're gonna make you snarl or smile or fake smile or frown or pout, you know, any of those. That's what your facial muscles are doing, just by contracting, right? And where they're attached to, the two different places. So again, muscles spanning to mostly joints, although those examples were not exactly joints, right? But they're contracting and they're pulling those things closer together. For most of the muscles we're gonna look at are connected to bones that are making up a joint, right? And so they're spanning a joint in some way and so when they're moving, when they're contracting, they're going to cause bone movement around this fulcrum right here, right? So we'll talk a little bit about joints and joint movement in a little bit. When they're contracting and pulling two things together, they're doing it around some kind of fulcrum, right? All right. So that for your whole body, right, you've got joints all around your body right over here. And that when they're contracting, 
right? The contraction of those around particular joints, particular muscles around particular joints are gonna cause very particular movements. So here again is your arm right here, your elbow joint right here. Here again is our muscle, right? So you have these terminology right here, the belly of the muscle, right? When it contracts, it's gonna exert force and pull those two things closer together, right? These attachments right here, right? The muscles are gonna merge onto these tendons, which are dense, regular connective tissue, and then are gonna insert onto the bone, right? So you got these attachments that are attaching the muscle to the bone right here. There's names for these attachments. The, the base right here in this experiment is not moving, right? It's fairly stable. And this is gonna be referred to in this situation as the origin. This weight right here is moving. This is gonna be called an insertion, right? So you got these two attachment point. One is gonna be referred to as the origin. One is gonna be referred to as the insertion, right? The insertion part basically is moving closer to the origin, right? It's not that these things just move closer together. The insertion is kind of moving closer to a more stable origin. And we'll see that's really the definition of these two terms right here. So here we are again. And about those origins and insertions, here's the general principle for all your appendices at least, right? all your arms and leg stuff. Your origin is going to be what we'll consider proximal to the joint. And remember the terms proximal and distal for your limbs, right? The most proximal part is the closest to your base, right? Your shoulder is proximal to your elbow. Your elbow is proximal to your wrist, right? So the proximal part is gonna to correspond to the origin. The distal part is going to be correspond to your insertion. In fact, some anatomy books are just calling them a proximal and distal attachment instead of origin and insertion. So that's the general rule about those two right here. So in this case, right here, we have the biceps brachii. We have the brachioradialis right here. And those are coming off particular bony structures, which you have learned at this point, right? So origins and insertions are going to be described by the bony landmarks that they attach to. So for your biceps brachii, you have two kind of heads, as they call them, your supraglenoid tubercle and the coracoid process. Those are where part of your attachment points for your biceps brachii. They span down here and then insert into the radial tuberosity right here, right? So this is the most proximal part and this is distal, right? So origin, insertion. And you'll see figures like that classically, almost all of them have the origins in red, insertions in blue. For almost all of those models that you'll see right there. All right, so here's your scapula. Right here. Your scapula sitting in your back right there that's making up your pectoral girdle, sitting in kind of a sea of meat right there. Right? It's just sitting out there, it moves. And so it's got insertion points like this, serratus anterior, inserts onto here, your pec minor inserts onto your coracoid process, your trap, your upper traps insert onto the scapula spine, your levitator scapula, your rhomboid minor, your major. All these are muscles coming from your axial region and inserting on there, right? So here's those levitator scapula, your rhomboid minor, your rhomboid major, inserting onto these, right? So before I talked about the limbs, proximal, distal. The other kind of rule for this is medial lateral for muscles that are originating off your axial skeleton right here. Because figure this is the more stable thing. And then this is what's moving when these contract. Like if you right now, if you retract your scapula by going into the like military, you know, uh, position at attention right there, your scapula would be drawn back, right? Your spine is not gonna be pulled towards your scapula. Your scapula is kind of pulled towards your spine, right? So your origins for all these muscles that are going out here are gonna be on your axial skeleton. Your insertions are gonna be more lateral. And then, so that's, that scapula is also a major muscle attachment point for all the muscles that are going out 
onto your brachialis or your radio and your ulnar bones, right? So there's going to be all these origins coming off here. Here's your biceps brachii and your corico brachialis, your triceps brachii, your subscapularis. Look at all these muscle attachment points. That's what the scapula is for. All these muscles are going out towards your arm, right? So the origination. And now you'll recognize these while we're here. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, to recognize those. Subscapularis, those are all those bony features that you know. Okay, so these are all origins for that. And then here they are as muscles. Here are these muscles, your infraspinatus coming back here, your deltoids coming off the spine, your teres minor also coming off the base of the scapula. Here's your triceps right here, right? So all these are origins going distally and inserting into your humerus or your radial and ulnar bones. Origins, proximal, insertions, discs. Every muscle that you got to know, you got to know that this is the biceps brachii, that this is the long head, that this is the short head, that this is the coracle brachialis, that this down here is the brachialis. And you got to know if it's on the list, you got to know where they attach to on both sides. Okay. If you know the origins and the insertions, you know, I'll teach you the principle so you'll know what the action is for that. The basic principle is that these muscles are going to, these attachment points are going to be on the anterior surface of the bone like proximal to the joint and the anterior surface of the bone distal to it. And that's going to cause a certain action, a particular action, opposite of the one if it were attached to the backside. But we'll get into that in a second. Right, but in general, though, that's, you know, if I ask you what the origin is, you'll look for the more proximal or the medial one on the axial skeleton, right? Or, and if I ask you for the insertion, it'll be the uh, distal portion or lateral portion, depending on what bone we're talking about. All right, so other kind of thing, least movable end, that's the more stable part, right? So here's your lats right here, right? They're kind of originating all along the uh, iliac crest back here, all along the spine right here off this big, what's called an aponeurosis. You get this broad origin, and they're inserting onto this teeny little spot over here on the humerus. Okay, so this is the insertion, this is the origin. This is, this is moving when you contract your lats, it's not like your back is moving towards your humerus, unless your, your humerus was very stabilized. This is why people often just say proximal and distal versus origin and insertion. But the other things to know, uh, origins often have a broad area, and then they're inserting on a smaller space. They also might have multiple heads, right? Like your biceps, break area, your triceps have multiple heads. And the insertion, the distal portion, is going to be a little more specific, right? The other kind of weird thing that's not always true, but in general, uh, for your stuff that's on your axial skeleton, the inferior region is going to be the origin superior on your axial skeleton. And I'll give you an example. Your sternocleidomastoid is what flexes your neck. Its origin is on like around your clavicle and your sternum and it inserts up on your mastoid process, right? So your head, when you shake, you nod your head, your head's moving down toward there. So that's why it's considered that. And we'll see the same for your whole trunk. All right, and so as your question, uh, will we need to know it? This is the kind of stuff that you know, you'll, you'll have to know. These are grayed out. You don't really have to know it. These are the ones that'll be on the practical. All right, so here's the general rule, like when you're looking at all these muscles that are positioning the pectoral girdle are going to be attached on your axial skeleton, your spine, maybe your head, right? They're going to originate. Their origin is going to be on the axial skeleton. They're going to insert onto the clavicle and scapula. For your arm movement, they're going to originate on the pectoral girdle, that is your scapula or your clavicle, and sometimes your thoracic cage, and they're going to insert on the humerus, right? So that'll move your whole arm over there as one by moving the humerus. There's also ones going around, that'll be around your shoulder joint. There's also ones around your elbow joint that are gonna originate uh, either on the humerus or scapula. And they're gonna insert on the bone below, bones below your elbow joint, your radius, your ulnar, or way down on your carpal bones. Right, so they're gonna flex or extend your elbow. 
And then these ones for wrist, for your wrist joint, they're gonna originate up here or down here, and they're gonna insert on your carpal. So they're gonna span that wrist joint right there. For your lower limb, muscles that are gonna move the thigh, your hip flexion, your hip extension movements, they're gonna originate on the pelvic region and insert onto the femur. Your muscles that move the leg are gonna originate on the pelvis and femur insert on the tibia and fibula, cross the knee joint. Okay, so these are crossing the hip joint, these are crossing the knee joint. And then you have these ones down here, originating up here somewhere, inserting onto your foot bones down there. Right, so that's your general rule of muscle attachment points.